Hey, St. Louis, I am coming solo to you September 12th, 13th, and 14th to the Helium Comedy Club. Go to natashalegero.com for tickets. Now let's get into the episode. Hi, welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. This is Natasha Legero. And I'm Moshe Kasher, also known as Lynn manuel Miranda, the <laughs> author of Hamilton <laughs> on Broadway. We're a married couple and a couple of comedians, and we're here to dole out relationship advice and tell you all about ours. Let's talk about the highs and lows of the week. What was your highlight? When my favorite dog was really sick, as she is right now, and you sat with me and the little baby that we have, and... Shed some tears for her. <laughs> Are you kidding right now, dude? I, I didn't cry. I didn't even come you close. You cried when I didn't even cry. No, and she's my no, dog and no my way. best friend. I didn't. I didn't cry. I don't cry. I've never cried. When I was a baby and I was hungry, I would, in. I'm talking one month old, I would go, mother, I'm hungry. And she would not hear me because she was deaf and still is. And so then I, even then I wouldn't cry. I've never cried. I'm just saying that was a highlight for me. So your highlight was when I cried. Well, I was just like, oh, you're like, you really care about, you know, me and my little doggies connection. Well, we are in a period right now, Natasha and I have some grief. Although, you know, you always say, don't mourn the living. And I did not. I read that. That's not my But that quote. was a quote that you brought into our lives. And uh, our dog is alive. And, That's true. But she's pretty sick. And so my low light was obviously that. She's been really suffering and it's been really hard and it's a weird she's thing. She's shaking and not eating and waking up in the middle of the night. Like she always cuddles with us and she's waking up in the middle of the night just like you hear her like collar, you know, shaking against the wood floor. She's on the floor, you it's, know. It's been very difficult. And the worst part of it is she's the only one of our dogs that has an IMDb page. So she deserves <laughs> to live. It's true. Look her up. Mayor Cutie. Oh, she's famous. She's a famous little dog and she's a she's a good dog and part of our family. And so the low light was obviously dealing with that. It was really difficult. And you know, it's very difficult to when you are like grieving for a dog cuz they're like you don't even have complicated feelings about them, you know? Right, you're like I just want you in my life because you make every room look cuter. <laughs> yeah. Uh but the highlight for me was today because she's feeling a little better today. It's intense what she's going through. She had like internal bleeding and then heart failure and then she's back and it, the whole thing is insane. But we we thought she was like donezo. Yeah, we were ready to kind of like put her down. And, and then we kind of got some a bit of a reprieve on that today from the doctor. And, and so maybe she's going to be on the upswing. I don't She'll never be quite the same dog, but she might be have some comfort and live for another couple of years. We don't know. We're hoping for the best and we can use all the good juju that the listeners can give us. But um, she hasn't been eating has been the biggest concern. And that was really a low light because it was just like we'd be trying to hand feed her chicken. And it's just like it's really sad when someone's suffering and they can't tell you why. And you can't convince them. As the vet said, when you're human and you're sick, at least your brain tells you like, I need to eat or I won't survive. But a dog is just like, I don't feel like eating. So that's been the low light. But the highlight was after the vet. We went to the vet today. We got this like appetite suppressant medication. No, appetite. Uh, appetite in, inducer. Enhancer. Yeah. And then we, uh, we we took her to this. We drove out to Malibu with our kid. And we got some salmon. And she started fucking macking on that salmon. And then we gave, gave her a banana. And she was like, give me that banana, bitch. And then we went to the beach. We went to Point Doom. And... She was like perked up. Her little ears were perked up and she was like kind of. She wagged her tail. Wagged her tail and was kind of almost running. And then the baby was on my shoulders and I was taking her to the tide. Our baby. The baby started screaming st at the ocean. It was awesome. <laughs> she started screaming at the, the ocean was kind of like a little bit fiery and ferocious today. And so she started going like, ah! And then I was like, <laughs> I guess I should scream too. So I was like, ah! And then I turned around and then Natasha was there. And Cutie was there. And our little baby was there. And that was a pretty good highlight. All right. Well, Plus, I bought a new car. I bought a brand new Bentley. I spent $670,000 on it. <laughs> Hamilton money. <laughs> okay, now should we get into our first call? Let's do it. First, we're going to call Mira from Washington State. Mira. Hello. <laughs> Mira, Mira. Is this Mira? Yeah, this is me. Mira, hey, it's, it's it's Bruno Mars. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> Someone told us you were 19, so we're trying to get you excited. Yeah. <laughs> it's Natasha and Moshe. Hi. Oh, my God. You guys are like my favorite ever. Seriously. Oh, well, um, we like you, too. Yeah. Tell us your issue. <laughs> so I'm in a long-distance relationship. And I live about three hours away from him. And it's just kind of hard to, like, keep things exciting. Um, Where, it's where's... basically just, like, like we talk a lot, but it's kind of just, I don't know. It gets, like, we end up talking about the same things all the time. What What are those things that you talk about all the time? We just talk about, like, what happens in our day and, like, something, fun, like, memes and shit. Like, it's just kind of... You talk of, about memes? <laughs> you really are 19. What are, you, what are some of your favorite memes? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Like, well, just talk to me like you talk to your lover. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh my god, <laughs> honey, honey, did you see crying Jordan emoji today? <laughs> oh my god. What's a meme that I like? Like the ah go crazy, ah go stupid vines. Those I watched. I feel a lot of those. Or like this call is making me feel like really good about being old. <laughs> <laughs> We need a translator here. We need like a cultural interlocutor to like translate between what you're saying and us. Wait, hold on. I have some ideas. So Mira, you're 19. Your boyfriend is also the same age as you, I'm assuming? Yeah. And he lives in your hometown? Yeah. So it seems like here's one thing I learned about having long distance relationships in my life is some people are good on the phone and some people aren't. And it sounds like Maybe mm. both of you are bad on the phone. <laughs> Honestly, probably. Yeah, so it's like hard. because get along great in person. Right. So it's like, it sounds to me like you just have to be able to increase those times together or maybe take some time off while you're, you know, experience. Because really, that's a, I don't want to say a burden, but that's a lot to deal with in college is to have a, a boyfriend three hours away. Are you in love with him? Yes. Okay. So you, you want to marry this guy. You're like not wanting to date other people. I don't want to date other people, but I also never want to get married. So. Oh, tell us about that. I just, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get married. I can't think of it. It's too far out. I hear you. I didn't get married till I was 40 and I never wanted to get married for, even when I was 40. It's too well, long of a time for you. I mean, to be fair, your favorite film is a vine. <laughs> so. Wait, I have an idea. I know how you could spice things up a bit. How? You should have an affair with a French professor. <laughs> oh at your university. You know what I mean? You'd have a secret you weren't telling him, and then so every conversation would be like... I live in Bellingham. All my professors are weird. Uh, I'm like yeah. granola. And, um, Where do you go to school? Western Washington University. Got it. Well, that's your problem. That's why they're all granola. I do feel that if you're really bored in the relationship... It might be time to just take like a six month break. <laughs> I think that she loves him. All they do is talk about memes. That is true. And memes are something that you should just send any like memes should not be talked about. <laughs> well, like memes are fun to talk about. And like I don't know. We yeah, Natasha. About, like, you sound <laughs> old. <laughs> Wait, what do you how do you talk about a meme? Because don't you need to kind of see it? Oh my god. Yeah, but it's I don't know. Oh my God. Like, Doesn't Natasha sound old and what? out of touch? <laughs> have you done mushrooms? No, I have not. You live in Washington and you've never done mushrooms? I'm scared of psychedelics. Like, I've seen people on that shit. It's scary. Okay, I know. It's not good. I know what you need to do. You and Homeboy, you guys need to. Have you ever taken ecstasy? No, I have not. I have not done any hard drugs. Seriously, I have not. No, uh, actually, I don't know if I want to give you advice to do hard drugs, so I won't tell. I, I don't think you should do that. But oh, you can tell me to do hard drugs. Like that's totally fine. Well, ecstasy might be a nice thing for you guys to do together that to could commune be. and get the relationship back on track. So you have some like, because sometimes I feel with Moshe, if he's been out of town for a while, it does take like a few days to get back into the groove of your relationship yeah. and then if someone's only coming to visit you for two days like i could see how that could get really hard well what what do yeah. you what are you passionate about what am i passionate about yeah like what do you really like like care about like you're trying to bring excitement into your relationship but like what's exciting to you um i really like hiking like i really like being outdoors and like hiking and kayaking i just i love nature and i love i love that she's like my professors are so granola <laughs> <laughs> 
one of the problems though with going on a long hike is that it's difficult to download those vines. They don't come in very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if you guys like read a book together and talk about it? Wow, that does sound exciting, Natasha. <laughs> do, you, do you know what a book is? It's a long <laughs> meme. <laughs> So I'll probably just have like Audible read it to me. I don't know. I'm oh, I'm such a millennial. I hate myself. But like it's uh, yeah. I don't like reading, but it's fine. Oh, It'll that's fine. That's hard. I'll, it's, I'll read a book. No, no, I don't think. I think you're not going to read a book, and that's okay. Um, I okay. Here, I, I think I got a solution. You guys should hike to the top of a mountain together, and then when you get up there, you know, you pitch a tent, and then just take a one mushroom cap, and stare into huh. each other's eyes for six hours. But actually, I, I take it back. Don't climb a mountain and do mushrooms, because then one of you might leap off. But I think why not take a, why not take a trip together? That sounds nice. Yeah, that honestly, that sounds like a good idea because that might like bring us together. Maybe take a trip where you're together for more than three days, and also, you know, randomly throughout the week, try to text him, you know, sweet things that you love him. That things that have nothing to do with like a meme or something you texted, just your feelings. Because you want to like get the base of your relationship back to where, you know, you feel like it's fun and connect. You want to be connected. I think that you are a person who it wants to go deeper in your life than you are currently going. You're living on memes and no books and, and you know, talking about memes with your lover. And it's no wonder that your relationship is a little bit on the surface, too. So I think, I think that this is an inside job and that if you want to find depth in your relationship, you got to figure out who you are because do you feel like you really know who you are yet? Um, like 60%. I was about to say 50, but I feel like since I've been at university, it's 60. Oh, that's a pretty good success rate at Western Washington University. Yeah. You got to like take a leap into like some scary parts of yourself so that you can figure out what would make you feel passionate. Because I don't even think you, uh, I mean, do you, do you know what you would want when you ask me, how do you make something exciting? What does exciting even look like? Is it a, is it a hike while watching Vine? Is it a hike? Or... You don't oh, say no, while watching Vine. Like... Yeah. Oh, now you're trying to get cool again, Probably Natasha. Not watching Vine during the hike. But like, I, what would be exciting? I, what would look, what, yeah. what's exciting look like to you? Like going and doing really cool things together and then being able to like talk about those things and then like like going on a really cool hike and it being like not like a, a pussy hike, but like a really hard hike and be like, wow, we just did that together. And like I've been on a few pussy really hikes cool. myself when I was a single man. I'll tell you what, that's a long, those are long. They can be long. So Mira, the next time he comes to town, I think you need to like plan, even though it's annoying to be the woman and plan everything, but maybe plan a whole fun thing and really put the energy into it and see how it goes. And then you guys can have that special moment, you know, that, that weekend, and then he can do the next one. He can plan the next one. Also, another bit of advice that I can give you is if you can try to not be 19, that would be really helpful. (laughs) I've tried. You're going to definitely not be 19 soon. <laughs> um, well, I think you just, yeah, put, put a little love into the itinerary of your weekends and see how it goes. Listen, I don't think you should do psychedelic drugs, but I do think you live in the headquarters of psychedelic drug use and you love nature so much that if I was you, no, no, you shouldn't do it. But, but I knew a person who was really into hiking and I think they went to a beautiful meadow together and just like took a little bit of Molly, uh, th- those people really connected. And also, stop huh. sending memes to each other. Just yeah. stop. Don't do it. It'll open up the world for for other things. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mira. Uh, update us and let yeah. us know how it goes. Yeah. Good luck. Send send a voicemail. Awesome. Tell us about this Thank trip. Thank you guys so much. Good luck okay, to bye. you. Don't do drugs. Today's episode of the Endless Honeymoon Podcast is brought to you by Skillshare. Now, Natasha, I have thought recently 
about going and taking a couple of classes at the local community college, but I know I'll never do it. I don't have time to do that, right? I would like to do that too. I know. Uh, nobody has time for it though because we're all busy doing the things that we actually did learn when we went to school or trade school or in our jobs. Well, that's why Skillshare came along. It's an online sharing platform where you can take classes online and learn all kinds of stuff. Maybe you're stuck in your career and you want to learn a new kind of career. There's all kinds of business classes, the staples of branding from purpose to product or or how to manage your finances. Maybe you're a financial mess. They've got a bookkeeping class. That actually would help me. You can take classes in everything from photography and creative writing to design, productivity, and more. Yeah, so listen, it's called Skillshare.com. If you need to learn a new skill, you want to share, well, that's the place to go. Whether you're returning to a longtime passion project, challenging yourself to get outside your comfort zone, or simply exploring something new, Skillshare has classes for you. So go to Skillshare.com slash honeymoon and you can get two free months now. That's Skillshare.com slash honeymoon. Find a new career or just learn some new stuff. Skillshare.com slash honeymoon. Who says comfy can't be work appropriate? Beta Brand wants you to look good and feel good even at the office. Now, Beta Brand sent me some of these black pants and I was a little skeptical, but I wore them to work out. And then I also wore them to a meeting and they were really cute. Stop it. This didn't happen. Really? (laughs) I'm just saying for someone like me who's very busy, I'm a mom, as you know, I don't always have time to like, sometimes I don't even shower, Mosh. Yeah, what they are is an online fashion retailer and crowdfunding platform for fashion. And Moshe, just so you know, you complimented me when I wore them. I bet I did. You look good. You look good in everything, but you look best. In beta brand. I like when any pants have stretch in them. I think it's essential. Well, you need a little stretch. You know <laughs> I what do. I'm saying? You got that thing on you. <laughs> they feel uh, good. They fit good. They're very comfortable. They got a great selection. Uh, they're better than pants or jeans that you probably have in your closet right now. People love them. So visit betabrand.com slash honeymoon, all lowercase, to get 20% off yours. Millions of women agree that these are the most comfortable pants you'll ever wear to work. That's, or to work out in. Right. Or both. That's betabrand.com slash honeymoon. B-E-T-A-B-R-A-N-D dot com slash honeymoon, all lowercase, get 20% off of your dress pant yoga pants. Betabrand.com slash honeymoon. Hey, we're back. Yeah, we are. And we're going to do another segment. This is a brand new segment that we're popping with excitement for, where we've trolled the internet, finding random questions that people on message boards and chat groups and Quora's and Yahoo Answers are asking groups of random internet strangers, taking those questions and answering them ourselves. Okay. Here's Question the first one. one. My boyfriend proposed to my sister. What should I do? <laughs> this one seems fairly obvious. Get a new boyfriend and a new yeah. sister. Yeah, that's awful. Because also your sister is clearly like giving off the vibes. I don't think she's giving off the vibes. She's giving up the ass. <laughs> what do I do? What can you do? I would say move to a new state. Okay, would it be a deal breaker dating someone who has a large debt? Debt? Ooh, yeah. I got a large debt, right? Isn't that why you married me? What is a large debt, too? That seems... Let's say I was $170,000 in debt. And I'm talking bad debt. Phone phone sex. Ooh. Ooh. I would say, like, why why do we have to get married? Is there a way to do a prenup that's about debt? It's like, (laughs) you know what I mean? It's like, I marry you, but not your debt. So you're on your own when it comes... You know what I would do? I would find a hippie. Here's what you do. Find a hippie, like a hippie priestess. And just do one of those like fake weddings. Like just go to the woods with your best friends, but don't, no licenses. I'm pretty sure our wedding was a fake wedding because like it was a Jewish wedding and your brother married us and he didn't quite have like all the. Oh, that's right. You proposed to him, didn't you? Oh my God. That he was didn't rude. really have any, everything figured out, which total and apparently Jewish weddings, this happens a lot. It actually happened on Transparent. They realized it was like a Jewish wedding, but it wasn't like quite like they didn't turn in the right paperwork. Like right. the priests know where to send the paperwork. But Jews don't? <laughs> so you think Jews are bad with paperwork? 
We invented that. That's anti-Semitic, Moshe. You're anti-Semitic. As a Jew, I don't appreciate it. You're that. anti-Semitic. You said that that priests know where to send the paperwork, but the Jews are just like, I don't know. I I what I I just I thought I just show up. I just thought we have salami, and I I I get married now. I just thought, do who do I circumcise? I'm just saying, I have a. <laughs> I have like a Manila envelope that I think has our marriage certificate, like the information. Like, the- oh, we might not be married currently. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank God, because you've racked up a lot of caviar debt since we've been married. Okay, here's the next question. I'm 16 and haven't dated anyone yet. Does this make me a late bloomer? Well, the thing about like not dating people. I mean, 16 is not that First bad. First of all, 16 is very young. Yeah, it's not that bad. She said she never dated anyone. She doesn't mean Also, she's like, does this make me a, quote, late bloomer? Like, what's wrong with being a late bloomer? I mean, I don't know. Well, the only thing I will say about 16 is young. So people who are 16 shouldn't feel too much stress. I remember I lost my virginity when I was um, seven years old uh, to a, a local rabbi. And uh, <laughs> no, I was... I remember I was 15 when I lost my virginity and I felt like I was a loser. I was like, I'm so pathetic. Because you were 15. I'm 15 already. Like, there's so much pressure, you know? How, how old were you? 15. Oh, shit. Was it to me? That'd no. be so nice. You're the only woman I've ever slept with. But but sometimes people stay virgins too long. Like, 16's good. You're good. But sometimes these, like, weird, like, old virgins happen. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? They want to wait till it's special, which is good. Oh, and then they start to get a stink on them. Exactly. Yeah. They want to get they want they, they want to wait till it's special. That's good. That's a good instinct. People should wait till it's special, I guess. But then it goes like, and I'm not talking about religious people because they're in a different category. If you're a virgin because you're religious, like that's legit or whatever. I mean, it's not legit fundamentally, but you know, I, I respect that in a way. But if you're just like a, a secular person who's like, I want to wait for sex until it's special, good idea. Then it gets like to the age where it's like it's a little bit you're a little too old you're talking 22 at this point i actually heard what the solution is to that oh well what is it get a prostitute (laughs) then you get the stink off you that you're desperate then you can find someone cool but if you're the kind of person that waited until you're 22 because it was special you're not going to a prostitute and what if you're a woman you're going to go get a male prostitute that's a good point not that they don't have male prostitutes i'm just saying they're harder to find and probably less less appealing but yeah it's this thing where they wait till it's special then it's like gets to like an age where it's like they stop caring about the special part because they're like this is getting a little weird but then they're just still kind of drafting in the wake of their own virginity and then all of a sudden you're a 30 year old virgin and it's like what what do you do nothing could ever be special enough so i think 16 you're good 22 fuck the person next to you and get it out of your system exactly it's similar to my prostitute solution okay here's a good one my husband of 17 years wants a threesome with myself and his mistress of four years (laughs) any thoughts any thoughts this is a question that needs so much more context it's like did you find out he was cheating and he's like babe 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 let me explain i actually want to fuck both of you in a way yeah i mean first of all do you know we just need more information do you know that your husband has been in a relationship with a mistress for four years i remember when we were early in our relationship and i was still like kind of grappling with monogamy what it would mean for me i was like maybe we could have like a threesome and you were like yeah maybe maybe um let's wait till we have a family to and to talk about that, and I was so baffled. I was like, you want to wait till we have kids to have a threesome? And now I realize, oh, that was you saying no and being cool about it. You're like, but you didn't quite know like how to trick me? Like you didn't quite have the language to just trick me into... into like. I said, let's, re- let's, let's you know... Revisit it after revisit. we have a family. Do you want to still? No. <laughs> of course not. Why would I want that? Uh, unfortunately, you set the seeds for, you said, let's revisit it when we have the family in one of our most embarrassing, awkward moments. You, you remember, or maybe you don't remember because you're on a lot of drugs. Oh but the moment, God. no, the moment they lifted our baby out of your stomach, uh, you were in surgery on a lot of heavy drugs. And the moment she wailed her first cry, I was like, we have a family now. Can we do that threesome thing? <laughs> and you were a little out of it. So you never answered. So. Okay, here's another one. Uh, how do I tell my mom that I'm not a virgin? That's kind of Why is your mom asking you that anyway? 
And why do you need to tell her? Right. Like, my mom just, like, assumed I had sex and we didn't talk about it. And if I told her, she'd probably start bawling. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. You mean to this day? No. I mean, then she would have started crying if I was like, just so you know, I'm not a virgin mom. Well, the thing about this whole idea that, like, you should be open and honest with your parents is, like, true. But it's, like, it doesn't mean you have to tell them everything. It also depends on the parents. That's very true. And if you're asking... Like your mom is very open. My mom was there when I lost my virginity, <laughs> cheering me on. <laughs> she would be. She tapped me out. She gave me some snacks. She's like, go get back in there. <laughs> okay, here's a good one. Is it normal for my boyfriend to make me delete my Instagram account? Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Wait, no, I no. mean, no, it's <laughs> what, not normal. No. Yes, you need to dump him. <laughs> I was like, dump are, him. Are you traumatized? Please don't go out with this person. Don't make any... Those older men always want to make you delete your Instagram account. Older? They don't, I don't want think you that's to hang true. out with your male friends. I, it's fo- not older. I have found it with older men. But maybe no, no, no. It, you know what it is? Jealousy, competitive men. How old were you when you were with men like that? Uh, up until I met you. Really? I don't know. I've dated older men before, and they're always like really into like you, like not. They just get jealous in a different way. Jealousy is such a dirty and disgusting thing, and it gets worse when it's from a man. I mean, it's just as toxic when it's from a woman, but men combine their jealousy with With power. With testosterone. With uh, with testosterone and power. And like any man that's trying to control a woman in any way, any woman that's trying to control a man too, but because there's that extra dynamic of like power abuse when it comes to men. Anybody who is trying to control your behavior who's dating you, get the fuck out of that relationship. That's a, It's abuse, and it only gets worse. I agree. Okay, here's another one. My girlfriend has a criminal <laughs> record for domestic abuse and repeatedly hitting her ex. Is that a big deal? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No. No, sorry, dude. <laughs> okay, let's take what? one more. Okay, you or want one more? Do you have more to say about that? I mean, the funny part about a lot of these questions is it's inherent in the asking of the question that you already know the answer, you know? Right. Like, obviously, the fact that you're asking if you should delete your Instagram account means you should delete or you should not be with that that guy. Right. Right. And this is the same thing. It's like, no, I got a girl. She does smoke crack and she does bloodletting. Is that like kind of an issue? Yeah, it's a fucking issue, dude. (laughs) Yes, it's an issue. Okay, do you want to take one more? Yeah. Why is it desirable for a woman to be a virgin but not men? Oh, because when women lose their virginity, they lose their um, sort of val- value and cleanliness. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> oh, my God. I had sex with a guy once when I was in college, and then he told me I was a, he was a virgin. Uh-huh. So I was like, I took his virginity, and it, it did make me feel very stressed. Oh, it's stressful. And you know what's funny is like that guy will never forget you. That's true. That guy will never forget you. He would think about you for the rest of his life. But all my boyfriends are like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but also, uh, if we can answer that question seriously, like, I mean, why is it valuable that a woman's a virgin and a man Desirable. isn't? Desirable. Desirable. It's obvious. I mean, why is because the world is a fucked up misogynistic nightmare that has values women's purity on this like bizarro mary mother of god like bullshit double standard but like in reality forgetting the why it's not it's that's it's that's not desirable like leaving aside what you're saying because yes as i felt i felt like a man who like popped this dude's cherry yeah you (laughs) pop you popped his butthole but like like i don't first of all it's not desirable like i I never wanted to sleep with virgins when i was single like i never wanted to be that that person i never i was you know there's a scene in what movie was it there's a scene in uh oh it was in the last picture show remember where there's like a girl that's like you know she flowering and becoming like a woman and she goes to this like sexy guy who's like cool you know she's leaving this little she's like a poor from a poor town in texas and she goes to this like the party in like the cooler part of town and all these hipsters are there and they're it's old school but they're like skinny dipping and smoking pot and she goes up to like the sex god of that group and she goes uh and she's like basically like take me and he's like are you a virgin and she goes yeah and he goes come back and see me after you've had a couple <laughs> and like i related to that guy because it was like 
like I didn't want that. But also, there's never a good time to do a bad thing. You got to lose your virginity, it's right? Just part of life. But also, it's like, it's like this whole idea that women. It's, it drives me crazy. This idea that like women should be like pure and sleep with few people. Well, you're and, from the Bay Area, so you have a very like advanced, you know, outlook on that. You, because you, you always say you don't think anyone could. Women aren't sluts if they sleep with a lot of people. There's no such thing as a slut. What's the, the slut is the dumbest thing. This dumbest idea in the world is like you don't want this person to enjoy their sexuality or it's dirty if they do it on a... Well, I went to a Catholic high school and there was like three pregnant girls in the senior year and we would call them sluts. Okay, now those girls are sluts because they got pregnant. <laughs> a non-slut can't get pregnant. That's true. Well, I think it's, you know, let's 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 do away with that thinking. I, I hope we're moving in Virgins that direction. Virgins are bad all around. But I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know if we are. I hope my daughter stays a virgin forever. You do? No. I mean, even that, I'm like, I hope she has a healthy relationship to her own sexuality. I don't know how directly involved I'll be in teaching her about that. Hopefully you can. But I just like, my I think I'm warped because my mom, like, my whole life was just like, sex is good, sex is good, don't worry. She told you that? Yeah. Remember when you told me your grandma told you that you hoped you make you were making girls come when you were like fifteen? <laughs> yeah. That's not normal, Moshe. No, I'm not saying I had a normal childhood, but I would I would take <laughs> I I was saying like I'd rather have my version of abnormal where my mom and my grandma were too open about sexuality in this That's like true. weird and uh, borderline inappropriate way than the opposite where I got all fucked up and warped from some kind of like parochial idea of like sex purity where i was like 30 and i could only come by like looking at a crucifix god forbid <laughs> okay well that was great you know our daughter just has sized out of her batch of shoes and we were frustrated trying to figure out how to get more shoes without being super wasteful because it just feels like with kids shoes especially you just get them and you toss them out well, there's a new company who's making shoes out of the plastic that they recycle from water bottles. They're stylish, sustainable, comfortable, washable, all in a pair of shoes. They're the perfect flats for life on the go. I mean, I get so disgusted when I go buy water bottles at the grocery store or at the 7-Eleven or I whatever. Know. And the idea that they could take that plastic and make it into something that we could use, that's kind of exciting. And they sent you some. And they're cute. They're kind of cool. I, I want to get the kids ones. Yeah. And, and the sneakers, actually, they look pretty cool. Rothy's are fashionable flats for life on the go. They're stylish, they're versatile. They the launch new colors and patterns every few weeks and they sell out constantly. Yeah, and because they're seamlessly crafted from recycled water bottles, they're super comfortable. You'll slip them on, you'll be like, whoa, there's no break-in period in these shoes. I mean, I hate that break-in period. I used to wear Red Wings. That shit hurt. If only they made Red Wings out of recycled water bottles. So go to rothys.com slash honeymoon to get your new favorite flats. That's right rothys.com slash honeymoon who says you can't have it all comfort style and sustainability these are the shoes you've been waiting for head to rothys.com slash honeymoon r-o-t-h-y-s dot com slash honeymoon get your shoes on let's take another call now we're going to call marina from atlanta let's wait for this skype beat to drop Marina from Atlanta or somewhere else in Georgia. She's got a problem. I got one too. It's that I haven't had an erection since 02. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Is um, Marina there? Yes. Wait, what's your name? Is this Marina? <laughs> this is Marina. Marina, it's Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> no, it's Natasha and Moshe. We're calling to say hi. Hi, guys. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Is it late? I'm not asleep yet. It's fine. Hell Moshe yeah. was really worried about how late it was where you are. Well, listen, podcasting's important. We all know that it's more important than most things, but I also think being respectful is important too. Don't you think, Miranda? Her name's not Miranda, <laughs> honey. Whatever. You don't mind if I call you Miranda, right? <laughs> I'm Ellen DeGeneres, Miranda. I'll call you what I want. I've been called worse. What's the worst thing you've ever been called? <laughs> oh, the worst thing? Not in English, but I'm not going to get into it. Oh, I wanted to hear it. That was getting exciting. What language was it in? Can we guess? Russian. Oh, man. I don't know any swear words in Russian. Okay, so Miranda, you want to tell us what your issue is? Okay, um, with my husband, we're a happy couple and all. It's just He does a few things that kind of irritate me. 
And I think I've heard Natasha complain about a couple of the same things with Moshe. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> I knew there was a reason I called you Miranda or whatever your name is. And whatever they called you in Russian, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it right now. Okay, so tell me, like, does he leave all the cabinets open and the drawers? Does yes. he forget his wallet yes. every day? Does he throw his socks everywhere? Yes, all of this, actually. Um, like, he'll leave socks or underwear or shoes or whatever just, like, on the counter or on the table. Oh, that's cute. He leaves his shoes on the counter. <laughs> Yes. I like this guy's style. One thing we had today, and he just gives me material, I guess. We have an issue with recycling. I have to train him. I'm like, first, I got him on board with the recycling. That was great. But then I had to teach him that you have to wash stuff before throwing it in the recycling bin. And then he'll just dump the recycling contents into the trash can, and then it just becomes a problem. I mean, we get in a fight, and I'm the bad guy. Well, uh, Maxine, let me ask you a question. <laughs> What is what does he do for a living? Uh, he's a videographer. Mm, not what I wanted. I wanted something really high pressure so that could excuse this kind of behavior. <laughs> um, how does he respond when you give him notes about housework? Oh, actually, that's that's the thing. He'll get he'll get pissed off like I'm nagging him, and I'm just that's like, how we... Moshe gets. Like he's just like, um, can we just like talk about your mess, please? And that's so... a pretty good impression. <laughs> Did you know Natasha does impressions? She she got passed over on SNL because she her whole audition was uh, me <laughs> angry about not wanting to be corrected. Oh, really? I mean, actually, you talking about this reminds me of something that Moshe pitched to me when we moved into our house, which is that he wanted our dining room. One of this is have, a fucking great idea. <laughs> we have two. I'm not kidding, Melissa. I'm not kidding. This is a good idea. We have two windows in our dining room, and he was like, "We should." He was totally serious. He was like, "We should turn one of them into a trash shoot." <laughs> <laughs> and it was his he was like let's open up the window and then we can have a shoot that go because it was like overlooking the trash so instead of going out the front door and bringing it around but he was like you th that's not exactly true well that's funny because you know my husband he in our next house he wants to build that into the house he's like you should never have to pipe <laughs> wait i'm loving your husband right now <laughs> This guy seems cool. He seems like right. a, a real comrade. Disorganized people often have really bad ideas about like how to make their lives easier. And it's never like, you know, the hard work, which is washing out the recyclables and putting them where they should go. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, uh, that's also, very true. That's Thank true you. about disorganized people. But the thing about nagging women is they often get divorced on. So <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, um, no, but Maxine, um, I just want to clarify. Her name's Marina, dude. Uh, yeah, but the bit that I'm doing now is different M name every time. Funny. You don't like it? It's fine. Listen. No, it's it. Actually, that's what Charlie, he didn't get my name right for the first month we were together. So. Are we <laughs> married, you and me? Am I your, I mean, is it me? <laughs> that would be a crazy, crazy relationship issue is that you are secretly married to me. Yeah. Well, here's the funny thing. I heard something. I forgot who said I think you were doing a podcast with someone. And then you mentioned something that you do that my husband does also. You leave a whole bunch of like pairs of underwear under the blanket. Like, <laughs> I do do that. Ew. No, I do that because when I, it's late at night and I'm asleep, <laughs> I take my underwear off while I'm sleeping. Maybe what you guys don't know is that a lot of men suffer from nighttime swelling. <laughs> and it's true. You go to bed. I might go to bed with a, th with a three-incher. But I'll wake up in the morning, it'll be 18 inches long. I'm not even kidding. So at a certain point, the stret, the fabric starts to break apart like the Incredible Hulk, his purple pants. And I got I to gotta shed. Okay. Uh, I have an idea. Is okay uh, the opposite of yes and in improv? I think that Moshe should tell both of us. I think you should tell us because whenever I bring something up to you, you're always like, I don't really like... You get mad at how I said it. But then when you want something different... You really know how to say it. So how do you approach people? You're so good at talking to people and like approaching arguments and like, what's the best way to say it that doesn't make someone feel like they're being nagged? Right? All right. Because Moshe's really good at it. He's always like, um, can we talk about something? We need to like, and it'll be something I've done once. And it's like, he just like schools me on it. I'll, uh, school, okay. I'll school you. So what's the trick? Um, I think, okay, well, here would be my actual advice on how to, talk to someone about being about any issue really is that you don't confront them in the heat of your annoyance mm. from them doing the thing that's good so you don't look okay. okay you don't look at the pair of nikes on the counter and run in and say why are your fucking nikes on the counter 
I mean, you can. You're right, because you always tell me about stuff like a day later. That's so smart. Oh, I see. Right, like you can do that, but then you're just going to get that person defensive because they're embarrassed about what they did or whatever. And they were like, I was late night sleep dunking. <laughs> get off my back, uh, Melissa. But <laughs> if you come to them the next day, and you, you even clean it up and you say, hey, can we have a little chat? Uh, can we talk about something that's been bothering me? Then I feel like it feels less like, you you know, you're pointing at a thing, you know. Okay. So that's pretty much the trick is just like the next day coming at it. I think that's a, like, that, hey, can we talk the about next this? day as he's doing it again? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, why don't we try it? Um, what, what else? The other thing to avoid doing is, uh, well, I try to, it's important to avoid saying, um, like blaming them and just telling them this is how I try to do it like how I how it makes me feel like when I see a pair of sneakers on the on the counter you know I feel dis, like disrespected or like you expect me to clean up after me and you know then he you can allow him to okay. kind of be more honest about why he does it if he's anything like me he probably does it cuz he is so busy thinking other things that he's incapable of remembering yeah that he did it that is very true. Like, so it's not a fuck you to you. That's good. I think those are two good things that I would want to implement as well because I just get very heated and accusatory and I'm down to just like yell at someone, which is not <laughs> the way to do it. How do you, how do you do it? Um, Maximilian, how do you, what's your... Well, I try, I try to keep my cool because I know that, I know that he blows up whenever I start mentioning something. So I try to like, ease into the conversation even if it's not the next day like 20 minutes later and i have kind of used that approach before i feel like his it's just a natural reaction to just kind of get irked but i guess the calmer i am about it the calmer he is in response which is i guess just a mirror response and maybe adding some of the stuff that moshe said like this makes me feel like you think that i should have to clean up after you and you know just adding a little emotion to it. Yeah, I agree. I got a good idea, but I'm gonna save it for first. I want I want to do a little bit of role play. Okay. I'm gonna be what's his name? Joel. Charlie. 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 So I'm Charlie, and you come tell me how, how how do you usually do it? So I'm I'm Charlie. I'm like, oh, I'm Charlie. I'm a videographer. Hey, I'm just <laughs> hanging out, you know, doing my thing. So funny thing. He's talking while he's doing stuff, and then he'll just be shoving trash into the recycle bin. And I'll be like, don't do that. Or even if I don't even say it, he'll, I'll, I'll have that look on my face, and he's like, what? What did I do? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. Do you guys have a baby? No, no kids. I would, yeah. I would advise against it. <laughs> I would not think no. he does. And actually, I, that's, I've never really wanted kids, I guess, and don't have that gene. Like our baby just started walking and Moshe took a shower with it today and was just like, I think down to let her like walk around on the shower floor. <laughs> and I was like, she's going to slip. But it's like, there's oh only God. so much I could say. Well, I'll tell you, I do get very annoyed when Natasha tries to give me like obvious parenting advice. Like when I'm like, I'll say like, oh, I got it. And she doesn't, she'll assume I don't got, like tonight was a perfect example. She's like, I'll just stay in the, I'll stay in the bathroom while you bathe her. And I'm like, you were like, down to let her a, a one-year-old no, no. walk around the, on the shower floor that's an assumption you made i said i'm gonna bring her in the shower and clean her up and you said but we never bring her in the shower we always give her a bath there is no we here yeah. i was gonna take her in the shower okay. because i decided that i wanted to do that so that kind of thing when when she's nagging me about something that i feel like i got that does kind of drive me crazy but this is kind of the opposite because he doesn't got it yeah, well, I feel like Charlie does it about a lot of stuff, and I don't, maybe it's just he doesn't want to be schooled by a woman. Maybe he's just kind of old school like that. I'll I tell know. you, he sounds like a winner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you have, I mean, hopefully our fight will, our fights will help you realize that, you know, we all kind of have to deal with this. But I think the more gentle and loving in general you can be, and also approaching it with a sense of humor can help. You know, but yeah. I don't know what's going to make. I mean, you also might have to just resign yourself to setting aside 15 minutes every three days to rinse out the recyclables. Yeah, I do that. I do it behind him. You know, and then to not get it. mad when you do it because unfortunately, you know. It's not going to change. <laughs> Wait, I got an idea though. He doesn't want to be schooled by a woman, which is interesting. Uh, are you Russian? 
Well, I mean, I was born in Ukraine. Okay, so you're Ukrainian, so you could probably do a good Ukrainian accent. Well, I, I mean, I, I speak Russian. Oh, I love this. I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking, because he doesn't want to be schooled by a woman. It, you put on like an old school kind of like Ukrainian, like a nice mustache and like a, a fez kind of a thing. I know that's not Ukrainian, but to me it is. And then you <laughs> you just surprise him one day and you, you'd be like, Charlie, what are you doing? It's me, Vladimir. I want to tell you man to man something. Win tuna can, motherfucker. It's Ukraine, exactly. bitch. You know, and then maybe he'll be like kind of Ivan Drago, kind of scared and be like, wow. And he'll say, I bet he'll be like, you know what, dude? My wife, my, my nagging, my nagging female wife tries to tell me this stuff and I just can't hear it. But hearing it from you, dude, I'm going to start doing it. I think you should do that. That's right. Also, I'll tell you, nagging in a Russian accent. That's that, a funny idea, Mosh. Actually, that's a great idea. If you don't want to do my full character work, here's what you start doing. Every time he doesn't do it, spend a full day t- uh, speaking or an hour speaking to him only in Russian. And at a cer- does oh, he speak Russian? I love it. Yeah. He doesn't know. Teach him he doesn't know Russian, does he? No. I mean, we've been together like nine years, and he still doesn't know any Russian. Oh, this is perfect. You just start talking to him in Russian, and eventually he'll be like, I'll watch the fucking tuna cans, okay? Just stop talking to me in Russian. Oh my god. This is part of a greater so this is part of a greater problem though, which is women don't want to nag and it's really hard. But I have a friend who said every Really day, they don't want to. Well, we That's don't. crazy they're able to <laughs> to push through that desire not to do it on such a heavy level. I have a friend who she's divorced now, but her husband, she said he would always leave his shoes right by the bed and she would trip and so she really wanted him to move them, but instead of moving them, she would just trip over them every day. Like do physical comedy? <laughs> <laughs> but then finally he saw that she kept tripping so he just moved it himself so you, there's also like you know more passive aggressive approaches like that that's interesting uh, how would you yeah. do that with recycling though um that's what i'm trying to remember that's what i'm trying to think but i guess you would just have to dump it like dump it in his bed next to his underwear <laughs> or whatever like how that tuna can get there <laughs> i think i think oh, if you add God. a little comedy add a little love add a little bit of russian <laughs> just a little yeah. bit You'll be on your way to getting Charlie well, to submit. It. And well, check I back in with us. Out for you too, Natasha. I hope you <laughs> oh, you I have out. a maid. She has a maid and I don't let her ever talk to me about any of these issues. <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking to you. I hope you don't find Likewise. this racist. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Enjoy your comedy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So what did we learn here today? Um, you don't close drawers. You don't negotiate well. Virgins are not important, but they are losers. And that you should never not have a girlfriend by the time you're 18 or you gay. That's just, that's just a fact right there. That's how it happens. That's how, that's how homosexuality starts. Straight boys don't get girlfriends. And then on their 19th birthday, they are like... I'm getting myself to Fire Island, baby, because I am gay. Can you agree with me that you shouldn't discuss memes over the phone? I will agree with you on that. Memes are for memeing. I guess that's true. Although, you know what? The internet has swallowed everyone whole. I always hate these comedians that are like, you know, there's like this classic hacky joke of like, you're getting online bullied? You know what you do when you're getting online bullied? Get offline. It's like those people don't get like... For young people, the internet and life is not two separate things. Really? It's one, they're, it's all the same oh, thing. Oh, no. Yeah, that's how it is now. Yeah, and you're out of touch, bro. That's. You, I just think of my daughter. Like, I don't want her to only know life connected to the internet. That is, unfortunately, it's too late for that. It's not, I'm going to have a Shabbat every Friday for my child. Well, she'll still get online on Saturday night. So, she'll have 24 hours where she's not on it. Well, we learned that we love deeply and we love our little dog deeply. And we learned about little cutie struggle. And we really hope that she's going to be feeling better. And with all of your positive energy, I think it'll help. Or maybe it won't. And if you have a question or issue you'd like to talk to us about, please give us a call at 213-222-8608. Leave us a voicemail. Tell us your issue. Tell us how to get a hold of you. And we'll call you live on the air. You can also email us your questions at endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail.com. Email us. And we'll call you or we'll just read your email live on the air. You can also email us pictures of you and your loved one and we will give you a free roast. Oh, hey, Tosh. Yeah. Love you. Love you too. (laughs) 
Okay, we learned a lot today on this episode, and we want to thank you for listening. But if you want to learn even more, let us remind you to go to Skillshare.com slash honeymoon and check out a class. We got two free months going on. Maybe, you know, you can learn how to be an influencer or an iPhone street photographer. I would love to become an iPhone street photographer. I'm going right now. Skillshare.com slash honeymoon.